Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I can't even see myself in the camera right now. I'm so tired. That was easily 10 hours on the road. Easily 10 hours. Oh, good lord. And, in addition to it being 10 hours, it was at least... It was at least 12 hours. Okay, it's 4 o'clock now. Wow, I'm exhausted. <laughs> All right, well, whilst I consume my, uh, my beautiful green concoction here, um, I figured I'd just do a little discussion about what I'm thinking, about what I want to do, where I want to go. And let me tell you something. I'm starting the liquid diet. I'm cheating a little bit by using sugar-free jello pudding. This is the uh, pistachio kind. I needed something else. <laughs> I just needed something else. I technically don't officially start till tomorrow. So I'll let this one slide today. But, uh, man, <laughs> I needed a break. That's a lot of protein drinks. I'm on the full liquid diet, which means I get to have clear liquids and protein liquids. I have five. Five, five, one, two, three, four, five, five, five protein drinks a day. I've never had so much protein in my life. I don't even know if I could eat that much protein on my own if I tried. I wanted to talk to you guys and sort of chat about why I'm doing this. I, uh, I've had this itch now for a while to get back into videography. Uh, well, actually, to get into videography, <laughs> I, I always kind of felt that my video stuff has been really weak, really kind of crap. And not that this is going to be much better, but this is a start. I'm at least putting effort into it. There's a narrative and overall structure to this. But I want to show that I can do this. And not just the videography stuff, but the bariatric surgery, the cycling that I want to do. And it just, it's really all about showing that it doesn't matter where you are in life, it's where you want to be in life that matters. So, it's less about thinking about where you're stuck at right now, and more figuring out the logistics of getting to tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I want to show that it's possible to go from a fat, lazy slob who doesn't really enjoy much to somebody who actually enjoys doing what he's doing. And I'm really tired of a lot of things in my life at the moment. Few of those things are going to change. I'm going to change them. All I have to do is, I gotta write a letter, <laughs> not even a whole letter. Um, and that can change immediately. So, uh, I, I'm trying my best here uh, to put together a product that I think people would like. And seeing somebody change their life from what it is to something else that they enjoy, I think would be a really enjoyable sort of process to document. And I think it's important, too. Um, 
you know, to, to be able to sit down and really realize that things completely changed because you put your mind to it, because you put effort into it, um, is important. And I think that could help a lot of people. Uh, I know it would probably would have helped me a long time ago if I had, you know, not been a depressed idiot. Who knows? So, that's why I'm doing this. That's why we're here. That's why I'm sitting in a comfort suite that's, quite frankly, a little bit, uh, I won't say shady, but it certainly doesn't exactly have an upper class of people staying at it. It's all right, though. Mostly good heart, mostly good-hearted folk, but uh, there's some some sketchy people around too. Oh well, my door locks. Who cares? <laughs> so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, and that's why I'm documenting what I'm doing. And I'm also documenting, you know, it's not just documenting the process, the process of cheating and eating green stuff. Which, by the way. About, I'm sure about a thousand times better than any of the green milk crap they serve at Disney World. Star Wars Land? I'm sorry. Galaxy's Edge. Okay. <laughs> mm. And if you're thinking, Jason, just change up the flavors you have. There's plenty of different protein drink flavors. I have plenty. I have six different flavors on hand right now. It wears on you. It definitely, definitely wears on you. <laughs> that stuff is... Mm. It's stuff, for sure. So I drink a lot of water to try and just pass the flavor through my mouth. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to try and edit this together, put it together, put a nice narrative together for this. And I think I have a really good narrative here, and it's to show that, you know, one man, one person, can do this. I don't have a lot of people in my life. I don't have a lot of friends and family who can come to my side and, and help me out whenever I ask. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I do it by myself. And I have friends who are, who are helping me, you know. I've got Mira, I've got Candy Goblin, they've been really cool. A bunch of other friends who have been supported but can't necessarily be there. Which I understand. You know, we're all spread around the internet, we're all spread around the world. I can't exactly ask somebody in the, in the Netherlands to come here, you know? In, in Saskatchewan, or, or, uh, or, or Sweden, or Norway, or, 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 or Russia, or Japan, or... So many people around the world know me, and it's so weird. I just don't get it sometimes. Anyway, I just want to show that, you know, one person can do this, the logistics behind it. And believe me, having one person do this on their own is a nightmare. And it's tough. And this is probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, you, you sit there and you think, oh, well, this is the easy way out for weight loss. No. No, no, no. Um, I don't know why that's a thing. I don't know why people think that. I don't know why people have that attitude. But it, this is not an easy thing to do. Um, it is major surgery. <laughs> this is not. This is this is not just a oh let's just go do it. just because a whole bunch of people get their stomach sleeved or they get a gastric band or they get the ruin Y on a daily basis doesn't mean it's an easy thing. You know, it's still major surgery. You're still getting put under anesthetic. You still got to recover from that. You got to recover from the surgery. Got to heal from that. And then even then. You still have to change everything you do anyway. So one of the things that I want to do, changing things, is to cycle across the country, eventually. And the other thing I want to do is to document it. And so the best way I can document it is by learning, is by, is by learning how to be a videographer, how to create a narrative, how to, how to edit that together and how to, how to display, um, you know, display it as, as a piece of work, uh, as, a, as a finalized product rather than just some schmuck doing a vlog. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to try and start to incorporate more of that. Um, you'll see that with some of the shots I've taken, uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, in-car shots I've taken, some of the B-roll that I've been taking. Um, and I'll try to integrate even more of that into a, into f a further narrative. Um, so uh, that's the other thing I want to do, is I, I want to sort of combine both of these into 
a pretty cool little product that says, hey, you know what? I'm on my own. You know, I'm by myself. I don't have a lot of people who support me. I don't have a lot of people I can rely on to, you know, to, to bail me out if I've ever had a, a problem in my life. I've got to be rel I've got to be self-reliant. Not because not because I choose to be. I, I do choose to be, but you know, the situation in my life is such that I have to be self-reliant. And I have to be self-reliant in a way where I'm not constantly breaking the law or doing anything stupid like that. So it's a challenge. That is, it is difficult in this society to be a single person who doesn't have, basically doesn't have, you know, immediate family around him. To be somebody who can't really reach out and say, hey, I could use some help. Can you, can you spare a few bucks? Uh, or can you spare a night? Can you spare a bed for the night? Um, I don't really have, I mean, I'm sure I could reach out to people and call them and be like, listen, you know, but I'd feel really bad about it. And I don't want to feel bad about it when I do something like, if I had to do something like that. So this is all about showing that somebody who can be self-reliant, who has been self-reliant his damn near his entire life, um, can still be self-reliant even when it comes to, you know, major surgical stuff and life-altering stuff. Um, so that's my intention, you know? To show that the, the lone journeyman can, can go out there to the next day and still accomplish things. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. This whole journey has not been easy. Getting to this point, what, what day is it? It's Thursday, August 12th. Getting to this point, at Thursday, August 12th, I'm eight days out from surgery. And it has been a monumental task on my part. The, the, the tricks I've had to do, the strings I've had to pull along the way to just get here, to this point, sitting in a hotel room, waiting for a week to go by. Basically, taking a couple of weeks vacation from work to do this in a city I've never been in, in a town I've never been in, in a state I've never stayed in. Um, I've only ever driven through North Carolina before. Um, to be able to come here to do this and not freak out about it, not be worried about it, not... Uh, to me, it's so natural to be able to do this, you know? To me, it's natural to just be able to go somewhere, anywhere you've never been before in your life, and just be okay. And I just be like, I'll figure it out. It's no big deal. So many people have told me they can't do that, or they don't know how to do that, or they're afraid to do that. You know, I'm here to say it's okay. You can do it. <laughs> you know, and this, this particular situation is, is certainly way more complicated than that. You know, this isn't just taking a road trip to some random place in America and going, okay, you know, I'm here now. Let's, let's go party here. No. This is... Uh, this is dealing with the anxiety, this is dealing with the frustrations, this is dealing with all of it by yourself. I don't have somebody's shoulder to cry on. I got me. And I'm okay with that. You know? I'm strong enough for that. But it, a lot of people think they aren't. And that's a shame. And that's a real shame. Because you are strong enough for that. It's just you've never done it. So you're afraid of it. So I kind of hope to document stuff like that, doing things like that. Maybe give some opinions on stuff. Like, I'm in Cary, North Carolina right now, and um, I hate to be a jerk. But not really. But, <laughs> man, Cary really gives me vibes. Like, this is what Staten Island would be if it wasn't full of egotistical pricks and really small. You know, like, it's kind of, it's kind of the nicer version of Staten Island, in a way. It's really weird to me how to, how to describe it. If you've never lived on Staten Island, you kind of don't get what I'm saying. But it's, it's suburbia, sprawl out, it's a lot of sprawl, very pedestrian unfriendly. Uh, very bike unfriendly. It's very much a car-centric place. Um, but, the people here are really nice extremely nice the driving isn't as 
intense as I would expect it. It's a little more intense than driving in rural New Hampshire, but I mean, driving anywhere outside of a rural area is going to be a little more intense. I mean, it's just, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, but it's nice. It's good people here. Um, I haven't run into anybody who's been, you know, a jerk or expectant of you. That's the other thing about big cities. They, people tend to be expecting. They expect things of you. And I don't really get that sometimes. Oh, well. Anyway, um, I've rambled long enough. This is my story. And, uh... I'm going to try and tell it as best as I can. Surgery day, hooray, I finally made it, woo. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, I feel oddly calm about this. You know, I've had my anxieties, mostly when I'm trying to sleep. That's when my brain starts to kick into overdrive because it can never relax. I, uh, I think I'm ready for this, you know. Uh, moment of truth time, before I left for this uh, vacation, I weighed 337 pounds at the doctor's office. And I came here, um, didn't really do the liquid diet, pure liquid diet when I came here um, until that Thursday. So it's basically been a week and a half now of, of the, pure, the pure liquid diet, just protein drinks and water, essentially, or clear liquids. Um, <clears throat> I'm now down to, this morning I was 323 pounds. <laughs> you know, I dropped over 10 pounds in under a week, week and a half. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm, uh, I'm finally getting this done. I, you know, I feel... I'm obviously anxious, you know, I'm prepared. Like, this is, this has been, you know, almost a year in the making now. Um, doing all of this and getting this prepared and... Gosh, it's finally happening, you know? It's almost like a kid at Christmas type of feeling, except I'm going into surgery, and it's not nearly as fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just something about surgery that's just not not as fun as opening presents, you know? I guess the doctor's going to open his present up. I, I've really done well on this diet. I'm really proud of myself for being able to, to sustain this for a week, week and a half. Um, this liquid diet was, was the hardest part, you know. This is definitely one of the hardest diets uh, I've done uh, in a long time. But the motivation to keep going, but the motivation to not waste my 18... At this point, $25,000, because, God, I've spent a lot of money. Um, God, I've spent a lot of money. <laughs> uh, but the motivation to not waste that money 
uh, has definitely seen me through this. Um, there were times, uh, I won't lie to you, there were times on this diet when I was ravenously hungry. Ridiculously ravenously hungry right before the diarrhea hit. I, I know you guys don't want to hear that, but I'm just going to straight up tell you. Um, this liquid diet gave me some massive, massive detox type of diarrhea. Uh, and it wasn't COVID, thank God. I am so happy I didn't get the Delta variant <clears throat> since North Carolina has had an explosion specifically Cary, North Carolina, where I'm at, has had an explosion in the Delta variant recently. So I, uh, I lucked out on that, and I've dodged that bullet so far. Um, thankfully, though, you know, I, I had COVID, I had the vaccine, I'm probably going to get the booster shot, so I'll be all right. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the diarrhea thing, uh, that was about two days of my body getting flushed. And it was kind of weird, too, because there wasn't a whole lot of water drinking going on. Not, not, as, much as, not as much as that was output, I'll tell you that much. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that, uh, um, you know, maybe it was my liver just sort of like giving up the goose and uh, dumping, uh, dumping a bunch of water, shrinking a little bit. I have had a total, and I've calculated this, I have had a total... <clears throat> of 36 grams of sugar over the past week and a half. Complete, just total calculated, assuming that, I mean, assuming that those, uh, um, those seltzer waters I had, that, that said includes zero grams of added sugar, that, that's, you know, closer to zero and not closer to one. Because, you know, they lie on that shit, so. Um, they try to avoid it just to say they have no sugar. They have sugar. It's a little bit of sugar, but there's sugar there. But it's a uh, shouldn't be enough to to cause any problems or any concerns. Um, I tell you what, though, after the diarrhea finally passed, and you know my body recovered from the the dumping. It's not really dumping syndrome, but the the dumping, we'll call it, <laughs> that happened. Um, after my body recovered from that, um, I haven't really been hungry. It's been extremely, extremely odd how. I just haven't really felt hungry, you know, I've, I've had mental hungers, I've, I, I got through the mental hungers, oddly enough, by watching, like, by watching, like, competitive eaters, and I've watched people do, like, reviews of, like, you know, the, um, the, uh, the kaiten sushi, uh, stuff in Japan, the, um, the conveyor belt sushi, uh, just sort of got my head hunger through that, and it's been alright, um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really physically felt hungry, though, uh, after this diet started, uh, after the diarrhea. When it first started, man, oh, God, would I kill for a burger. Ooh. <laughs> when it first started, man. Uh, but now, like, I'm not, I'm still getting the head hunger thing. I'm still, my mentally, I'm just like, hey, I need to eat, you know, but physically, I don't feel it. Physically, my, my stomach's not gurgling. I don't feel like I have to consume. It's easier to say no. Um, to things than it was when it first started. When I first started, I saw, uh, um, it was at Walmart, <clears throat> and it hit me pretty hard. And I'm sitting there, I'm standing there in Walmart with my shopping cart, and I'm just going, man, you know, I could say heck it to today, and I could just eat that sandwich tonight, and then it'll be fine, because I still got a whole week left after today. It'll be all right. I'll, get, I'll just do that. But I didn't do it, thankfully. I didn't do it. I'm really proud of myself that I said no to that, and I got past that. I also locked myself in my hotel room for, like, the next two days and decided, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I just, I had to, man, I had to detox. I had to get out of it. I had to get away from that mentality. It wasn't working for me. And then I went and saw a couple of movies just to kill some time, uh, which, you know, helped. I saw, uh, I saw Suicide Squad. That was bad. I saw Free Guy. That was bad. Um... But I really like Jungle Cruise. That's the unexpected thing. I was I was expecting to like Free Guy, and I was expecting to like Suicide Squad. Didn't like either of them. Uh, but I loved Jungle Cruise. That was pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, it's surgery day, and uh, I'm gonna go from not having five things in my stomach to having five things in my stomach. I don't think I'm really gonna show you guys. Uh, maybe I'll like take a picture or a small video for you guys, uh, and then, like I'll post it on the Discord, which you could join in the link below. Um, maybe I'll post it there or on Twitter. I'm at Adventures. Uh, with, I'm at uh, Jason Appended on Twitter. Uh, I think. 
I'll, I'll post a link again in the description below. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm prepped, man. Now, I owe you folks an apology. <clears throat> I haven't filmed anything post-op. Uh, I am out of the operation. It's been six days. Six. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six days since my operation. I just had my first week post-op review, in-person session. It was mostly just for the doctor to check out my scars and make sure everything's cool. And it is. So... Um, <clears throat> I haven't really filmed anything, and the reason for that is twofold. Number one, I've been sleeping a ton. If I'm not sleeping, I'm farting, and if I'm not farting, I'm sleeping. That's pretty much all I've done, outside of occasionally waking up and going for a walk like I'm supposed to. The second major reason is the fact that right now, at this moment, I sound like somebody with stage 14 throat cancer. And to be honest with you, that doesn't make for a great video. But I'm recording this anyway because I wanted to record something for post-op. My schedule, my routine has basically been exactly the same. I wake up, I get water, I get a protein drink, or I get something else. I mix like, you know, high protein yogurt, low fat, low sugar, high protein yogurt with some protein powder. Maybe put something else in there just to change the flavor up because right now all I can have are the clear liquids. But it's, it's really just like liquids and slime essentially eat that, and I go to the bathroom, and I go back to sleep, because I'm super tired, I go out for a walk, I do, I get more protein drink, I'm getting about 100 grams a day in right now, I'm getting at least 64 ounces of liquid uh, fluid every day, in addition to the protein I'm getting, um, <coughs> um, <coughs> if you're wondering what's going on with my voice, it's, it's from the anesthetic intubation, it, Really, um, on this side of my throat, just got so super irritated. I've been coughing a lot. That's caused a little bit of bleeding in the back of the throat. Not a lot, but enough to be like, hmm, <clears throat> that spit's a little pink. But uh doctor looked at it and said it's okay. It's just probably just the irritation from the, uh, from the intubation. So what are you going to do? Now, uh, besides that, that's really all I've been able to do. Um, the pain levels, very much controlled. I was off the high set first night. Actually, that's not true. Um, the first night I did use it, I used a large dose, about 10 milliliter. Um, and then <clears throat> the second night I used a smaller dose, uh, about 5 milliliter. And that was only because I was trying to turn, as I was trying to turn over and sleep on my side, I felt like this pain, um, right here on the uh, right side of the belly, which in case you're wondering, that's where they ripped, uh, like three quarters of my stomach out of. So it tends to hurt a little bit more. There's, there's more stitching going on internally there. Uh, I used 5 milliliter, and then I haven't used uh, since Tuesday, Sunday, since Monday night. It's now Thursday night. I haven't used the high set. And before I travel through the great state of New York, <laughs> I'm going to dump that stuff, throw it out, make sure just in case, God forbid, anything happens, because you know damn well New York State will stomp a mud hole in my ass, even if I have a prescription uh, for the medication, transporting it across the state, there's something there that's not going to be good. So, <clears throat> uh, I have been driving around. Uh, doctor said I probably shouldn't do that for the first week, but at the same time, he said, if you don't feel any pain, and you're wearing your seatbelt, and you're not on any narcotics, and I'm not, Whatever. Um, you know, he just advised me to take it slow, don't, uh, don't speed, <clears throat> you know, don't get into an accident because you probably screw something up, but other than that, everything's been good, so past six days, sleeping, farting, eating, walking around, that's it, man, that is it.